Keys, and I'm a paranormal investigator. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I actually met some, I was set up on a blind date with a guy in Michigan. And I said, what do you do for fun? And he said, I'm a ghost hunter. And I said, you're never going to meet my mother. I'm, I'm never going to introduce you to my mother. And we, we started dating, and he started showing me what he did, how he did it with his equipment. And when we broke up, I said, I don't need you. And, and I just decided to go off and do it myself. You know, I do lectures and I tell people this all the time, if, if you want to learn how to play tennis and you go for lessons for a month, at least twice a week, by the end of the month, every cell in your body has been retrained. Every muscle movement, every reaction, and it's going to adapt to the sport. I think when we're little, we've already got another sense, but we lose it as we get older. And it's, it's all about practice. It's all about trusting your intuition. It's all about your gut. If you see something out of the corner of your eye and you think you see something, chances are you probably did. But you don't trust yourself, so you dismiss it. And a lot of people do. The alarm goes off. The, uh, you know, it's, it's very hard to um, explain. It is a gut feeling and uh, you know the more you do this the more sensitive you become and it happens to everyone not just me everybody has a gift whether they decide to pursue it or not or try to figure out what that is that's on them but everybody has a different ability and some people are more sensitive than others you know some people can smell things some people can see things some people hear things and there's a lot of different You know, there is uh, Columbia College in South Carolina just did a Skype interview with me last month, and they are introducing a paranormal psychology class. And, you know, I, I, I applaud them for doing it, and, and I think it's interesting, but, you know, there are a lot of people that claim I'm a professional, I'm an expert. I, I think that that's really based on ego. I, I don't think that anybody is an expert in this field and everybody, you know, the right now there are a few big names in the paranormal field locally and um, the only reason they're well known is because they've gathered information, historical information, which anybody could get, and they wrote a book. And I think if you're out there and you're doing it, everyone's an expert. It just depends on what you You don't. You can't. If you give yourself a title or you're self-appointed or if other people give you that title, it, there is no way in this field, there's no humanly way possible yeah. to know for sure. These are all theories. Um, it's all a hypothesis being tested over and over. And sometimes we're lucky and we get real evidence. White noise um, is basically a level, uh, a, a level of sound at a very low decibel. And it's background noise. It's a hum. It's a very soft hiss of a TV. It's, it could fall into many different categories. And white noise generally indicates that there is an elevated level of energy. We, we generally use white noise as a piggyback for them to verbally communicate, them being a spirit. A lot of places 
that we investigate, that we get phenomenal results from, these locations all seem to have one thing in common. And 99% of them are all by power, a power station, or a huge power grid, or something that has to do with electricity. All of them. That's no coincidence to me. Yeah. So they need energy to manifest, uh, show themselves visually. They need energy to move things. They need energy to speak, to verbalize. Um, they need energy just like we need energy. So it would kind of make sense that the best results that we get are facilities that are located near a power grid or a power source. That's, a, that's the best question. That is the most popular question that people ask me. And there are people out there that are demonologists and um, exorcists. And, you know, it all depends on faith. There are no guarantees. A lot of the times it does help if the owner of the house or facility wants something removed if it is bad enough to, to warrant a removal. It's all about faith. That's all you have. And what people do not realize is that even the atheist who won't commit to a name or a deity or one certain belief, everybody, whether you have a, a religious faith or belief in anything or not, believes in certain universal things. There must be balance in the universe. Everything that goes up comes down. Everything that turns light turns dark. I mean, the sun will not stop rotating. There are certain laws in which we exist and we live. And so if somebody does have something, number one, that was investigated and needed to be removed, trust me, they believe. So all of a sudden they've got faith in something, whether it's bad, good, or indifferent. If they, if they need it removed, there has to be some kind of blessing. Has to be. Whether that's administered by a local priest, a rabbi, a shaman, a demonologist, an exorcist, it doesn't matter. It needs to go. You have to reclaim personal power over the space that you're in, and that's the only way it's going to happen. And if you're lucky, it works the first time.